MTD CNC have travelled to Oakham to the home of iSpec Precision Engineering and I'm joined by Ashley Page from Hydrobeed. Um, Ashley, this is a great account for you. They've just invested in a robo job automation cell and they've also already ordered their second. Yes, yeah, so uh, Darren here is, uh, has done really well with the turning solution that we've just put onto the CMZ lathe. Uh, he's seen great productivity. He's seen uh, what, what gains it's made for him, in particularly um, the repetitive tasks on the machine. So him being a subcontractor, he needs the flexibility with the foresight of his machines. Uh, we're able to keep a lot of his specifications in the cell. How long ago did he invest in his first robo job? First installation was about five or six months ago. Uh, and within sort of a month of having the, the first installation, he ordered the second. Wow, so he really seen the gains immediately. Yeah, yeah, so it's uh, really, really good for, for, for high spec in particular, the way that they were running and their skilled staff. Um, it's turned from them to, to realize what it's given them. So a lot of those repetitive tasks and actually that, that man on the machine, how long it takes for that batch to actually process through the machine, um, where they've been able to um, achieve faster throughput uh, and more uh, so, so obviously so it doesn't have to be a big batch so we it's the 20s it's 30s the 40s and the 50s those batch sizes that he's able to automate that was my next question really you know this is a, a single spindle lathe what kind of volumes would you recommend that the robo job lends itself to and what kind of range in regards to size of component um, and payload um, can 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 you use? Yeah, we're after the batches of sort of your, as I said before, the 20s, the 30s, and the 50s, even to your hundreds and thousands, because we can still break the batches down. And the particular application we've got on at the moment, there's 187 parts, and it will run for uh, 13 hours non-stop because we're turning the part over, and we're achieving a finished component from a single spindle machine. So you're also achieving unmanned running overnight as well. Is this correct? That is certainly if there's, if there's additional hours in the day that you want to fill, uh, whether or not it's three, four, five or six hours, there's still almost a, an additional shift. It's still five or six hours of additional spindle time. So yeah, when you can run unmanned, of course, not an issue. But uh, with regards to your materials, your swarf management and your tool life, they're the areas where you need to make sure that you're well up on uh, and yeah, you, you educate yourself on. The process needs to be absolutely perfect prior to running overnight. Now. In regards to, you know, I would imagine that a, a, a barrier to entry is some people may be scared of the programming of a robot. How easy is this, Ashley? So yeah, it's, it's really, really easy. I can show you through a few points of how you actually set up a basic component. On your home page, you have all your saved components. You flow through these few screens up the top here. So you have your start page, configure page, position, and automate. You flow through these, and then you can press the go button. He's ready to run. So we say raw opponents on the stacker, into the machine, get turned on the regripper, into the machine, finish parts back to the stacker. And fundamentally, you tell it the size of your billet. So this one is 70 mil diameter and 27 mil high. Based upon that information, the, the software will tell you how many billets you are going to get onto the table maximum, or you tell it how many billets you've got in total. So we've got 187 here, and it tells you where to position them relative to what the table has. So you have the series of poles, and the stacks of the billets and the poles, the further apart they are, bigger diameter, the closer together, smaller diameter. So it's very conversational, very user friendly. Now also it can be, well it is a modular stacker system, so the, the configurations can be quite simply changed for, by changing the pin location. Yeah, exactly. So uh, as I said before, closer those pins, the smaller that diameter, the further apart the pins, the bigger the diameter. The, pi the pins, you can release them with a handle under here, so you pull the pin out and you're able to configure the positions. So you have multiple positions down here on the table. So here for this application, we've got raw parts on this side and finished parts on this side. So as you see, this is the turn assist table, similar to where the gantry works. As this side uh, rises, each level will be removed by the robot and as that side fills for the finished components, the table will drop. Can you only load round, round billets? No, so yeah, we can also go down the, the square, uh, square and hexagon route. So as you can see, the pins here on the table, they're like a teardrop shape. You turn that 180 degrees and the centre point of your square will just drop slightly. Now, what about the pallet system on the floor? Is this for more shaft work? Yes. Um, actually, here at High Spec, they've taken multiple options and extensions, we call them. So 
you have the pallet unload, which is that metal pallet on the floor with the grid plate, the holes in it that you see. And on that is a grid plate where we have uh, the shafts that they lay within uh, the Vs. So you can see, see the Vs down here. Um, and that is where you position your billets and the software will tell you where to position your billets relative to the size of your billet as you've just seen and how, how big that pallet is. Now, from what you've told me, you know, you've really put my mind at ease. It is a real um, easy to use system, but it, the, the productivity gains and efficiency gains are absolutely astronomical, aren't they? Yeah, so I mean, uh, I think it, with regards to those three or four hours running that you might only get from one particular job, that might be another 50, 60% of what you're getting from the machine. So you can see by just small automation hours, three, four, five, six hours, you can get almost double the capacity from the machine. Now you are a UK manufacturer based in Milton Keynes yourself. You, you manufacture the bar feeders. And, yep. and again, there's a couple of the Hydrofeed bar feeders here today, but you're actually using the robo job within your own facility, aren't you? So you practice what you preach. Yes, yeah, so we, we try to uh, do our best to, uh, to do that. So there's particular products and repeat products that we have because we manufacture our own product. We have a bit of foresight in the production and planning. So that's quite nice for the automation. So our lathes have bar feeds on them and we have billet loaders. So yes, we, we, we certainly automate within our factory to, to gain. And how important is automation? Why should everyone in the UK start to embrace automation, you know, moving forward? Automation in the UK, as, as, uh, as an engineer and industry in the UK, we are we're behind from Europe. And there's stats to say that Germany, for example, there's three times more robots per 10,000 employees in Germany alone than there is in the UK. So we're, it, it's, it's a global market now that we're all competing in. So if we're to try and upkeep with our competitors effectively, maybe even in the subcontract industry, we, we need to be there with regards to how that flows through. And to touch on robotics, um, robotics is that next form of established uh, automation. So your bar feeds established automation, gantries established automation, uh, uh, pallet loaders are established automation. So now with standard off the shelf products such as the robo job system, it's that next established solution. So it's that tick in the box for your billets, for your medium to large batches. Now the robo job that you offer now does not only service a lathe but also free access milling machines as well. Yeah, not just three axis milling machines, so um, most of, of what we've done is either a fourth axis, five axis, uh, but also three axis. It, it depends upon, um, because on a robot application you'll need an automatic vice. So it's how we automate that vice. So on a five axis table, because it's rotating and spins on the trunnion, uh, we need to allow the air to come through the vice. So there's ways to do it. We can work with partners to get it done, but um, yeah, it doesn't have to just be three axis. And for people that have watched this video, that may have a, a serious interest in robotics and automation, how should they get in touch? So yeah, con uh, contact us at Hydrofeed. Um, we're in Milton Keynes, come and give us a call. I'm happy to come and look at new applications, look at different ways to execute it, because when you do come to automate, there are definitely things that you might need to change, such as your raw material, such as the way that you machine it, such as your speeds and feeds, because does it matter if you finish at three o'clock or 3.30, do you know what I mean, if it's, if it's in the middle of the night? So there's a few things that, that need to be looked at when you come to Automate, uh, and particularly when you go to those more multitasking machines, that's where you see the bigger benefits from higher cycle times, um, finished, uh, finished operations, the finished components, and that's where you get your real benefits.